great Tuesday, and welcome to the King Connections podcast. I'm your host, King, and I'm honored and privileged to have my guest today be Runa. And Runa, I'm, I don't want to chop up your last name. If you can say that for me, please. <laughs> Baulius. Baulius. Yes. That's it. Ba- yeah. Runa Baulius. Yes. Well, thank you, Runa, for joining me today on King Connections podcast. Well, thank you for inviting me. It's an honor to be with you. It's an honor to have you as well. Now, one of the questions that I don't have, um, I always like to start with, I should say, is kind of what's your spiritual energy level? And that just kind of dictates the flow of the conversation. What I mean by that is zero being life sucks to 10 being life is awesome. So where would you say you fit into that that spectrum? I choose to be a 10. I love that answer. I choose to be a 10. And uh, to me, it's, uh, it's a conscious intention. When you wake up to the day, you can choose how you want to go through your day. And uh, the older I get, uh, and the more we could say aware I become of uh, actually the power that I have, uh, the power of choosing, uh, then I, I, I choose, choose to be a 10. I love how you said that because um, one of the reasons I asked that question is because when I have meetings with folks or when I do my presentations, I always ask that because I want to know the energy of how people feel in the room. Mm. I believe if people are going to answer a two or a three, it's not going to be a very productive meeting. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of adversarial, uh, people going to have attitudes. And what you said was very important. I always have to let people know when they say, well, I'm a six or I'm a seven, is that it's a choice. And, you know, the system engineer in me, the logical thinking person in me, I never see a reason to choose anything less than a 10, Mm -hmm. you know, and I know life's going to come at you and you're going to have circumstances that try to make you be less than that, but the power resides within us. So I'm glad and thankful to you for resonating, for recognizing that and sharing that as well. Well, you're welcome. I I know you, uh, you, uh, we are going to be talking about what it means kind of to be a conscious leader. And, and for me, that's one of the big things about uh, kind of committing to the path of being a conscious leader, and that is to, to have the awareness and cultivate the awareness to, um, to respond to what life throws at you versus react unconsciously. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So now my first question to begin our interview, which you've been at 10, I love it, is mm-hmm. what do you see as your purpose in life? My purpose in life is to uh, awake or wake leaders up to their true power through conscious leadership. I love that as well. Yeah. And you say awake to their true power. Yeah. Do you find that there are some, resi- some uh, uh, I would say some leaders are resist- resistant to being awakened to that? Have you Have you come across that in your experience? Yeah, people don't want to be told that they are not awake (laughs) and in a way what we are talking about is consciousness yes so what is true power to me true power is really uh, our connection to source energy which is consciousness so um, people don't want to be told that they are not conscious enough and they don't want to be told that something is is missing or lacking but but I have the philosophy that we can always grow and learn and that if we are here in the physical form on the planet, that means that we have still something to learn. And I look at life as an opportunity to, to kind of experiment and, and, and add to my uh, knowledge of what it is to be a human uh, uh, in, a, in a physical world, but connected to spirit. Absolutely. And before I go on to my next question, a question has come in from one of our viewers, uh, Kent Frazier. Uh, Thank you for joining us, Kent. Definitely appreciate your investment of time and energy. To what extent do I have a choice in my way of relating to what's happening? Well, um, this calls for a little bit of self-awareness, because if we are not aware of that we have a choice, then we, our belief system will tell us that we have to do this or we have to do that. But if you're aware of that, there are endless possibilities, infinite possibilities in how we move forward in life and how we how we respond to how we decide 
uh, how we decide to, to, to respond to, do we respond with anger or do we respond with patience or with calm or compassion? Uh, these are all different uh, possibilities that we can choose to respond from. So that's what I mean with what, when you are cultivating your leadership, how, what is the state of being that you want to be in? And how do you want to have other people experience you as well? as an angry person, as a resentful person, or as a person that is compassionate and understanding uh, with, a, with an open mind and open heart. Absolutely, absolutely. And thank you for answering that, which kind of leads right into my next question. And you kind of answered a little bit in your previous answers, but I just kind of want to explore on it a little bit more. And is how would you define a conscious leader? Because we throw that time around quite a bit, conscious, unconscious. Yeah. So I just want to get, how would you define a conscious leader? Uh, to me, uh, uh, a conscious leader is a person who is uh, committed to leading and living their lives from conscious awareness. And the conscious awareness is again, self-awareness to begin with, to, to start cultivating self-awareness. So you are aware of your thoughts. You are aware of your emotions and your feelings. You are aware of your body you are uh, potentially aware of something bigger than yourself, your connection to, to spirit, we could say. And uh, so with that awareness, you again can choose how, how you respond, how you lead yourself forward in life. So that's in a way for me, the path to self mastery. So that's the beginning of it. And then we need to start, uh, a cult conscious leaders have to start cultivating also the relationship to other people because we are relational beings and uh, we are not here on our own. And uh, so how we relate to others is, is, is uh, again, part of being a conscious leader. And then uh, how deeply do we understand the interconnectedness that we are all in a way one, we are all interdependent on each other and we are in, in all our diversity, we are one. And that's uh, another aspect of, for me, being a conscious leader. And then the last one, uh, it's, it's, how can I say, you can't be a conscious leader without uh, committing to this. But I like to see, and most conscious leaders that I come across and I know, they this is just coming from their heart. And that is a commitment to contributing to the to the betterment of the world to yes. to be a part of uh helping the collective uh or humanity uh come to a thriving uh and not only humanity but all living beings absolutely absolutely i want to show you share with you one more compliment that uh kenneth said he said runa is one of my favorite leaders on these topics oh my god <laughs> oh that's kent <laughs> I, I we speak the same language <laughs> absolutely absolutely you know and that's why i'm i'm a strong proponent behind hosting these conscious or king connections podcast it's, it's to connect with conscious leaders who are in alignment and hear your stories of how you implement conscious capitalism or conscious business or whatever conscious practice you're implementing in your business mm -hmm. so Thank you, Kent, for that kind yeah. of compliment. Thank you, Kent. <laughs> you know, um, one of my favorite questions to ask is my next question. And that really stems from kind of really seeing what a person is spiritually in their lives. And the next question is, what are you most grateful for? You know, I am most grateful for, for being alive. Mm. You know, I don't take it for granted. We are losing people every day. Um, and I feel it's a privilege actually to be in a human form at this time in history. Yes. I think we are going through major shift, paradigm shift. And uh, so we can see in the polar polarization of everything, we have, we have so much ugliness in the world. We have so much war. We have... Uh, we have hatred, which is a word I don't like to use, but that's what we have. And then we also have so much love and, and compassion and goodness. So in a way, it's, it's a fight between light and dark, good mm. and evil. And uh, I want to, I have placed myself in the camp of the light. 
and I feel it's a privilege to 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 be a part of, we could say, uh, the group that is trying to midwife uh, humanity through this paradigm shift. Hmm. I like that term, midwife humanity through this paradigm shift. Yeah. I think that's that's critical and key, and I think that kind of also is an excellent segue into my next question. Um, your company, and this is a kind of a twofold question: What inspired you? as well as what is the mission of the True Power Institute? Uh, let me give you the mission first. The mission is uh, to evolve humanity's relationship to power. Hmm. And we could say just to power, but then I can extend it to true power. That takes it into a totally different uh, field, which is more the conscious aspect, the spiritual aspect. Uh, and, and what uh, inspired me to do that is that I, well, I was in Santa Fe, New Mexico for 13 years, where I, I feel I kind of did my apprenticeship in conscious leadership. I was uh, apprenticing and training with various teachers and teachings, including um, a Native American teacher. And uh, she was very clear on the paradigm shift. She had worked with... Uh, uh, elders uh, from different uh, shamanic traditions that had uh, been talking to her about prophecies, about uh, shifts that hum humanity has been going through. And uh, so I, I learned that from her. And I know exactly, I was reading in her book when she was talking about that we have been in a period of 5,400 years that has been that we have been calling patriarchy where men have been in charge and that we are entering into the next 5400 years or a period of over five five thousand years which is going to be called the era of women where the other period was the era of men and um so in a way this is a shift in power away from um men being the only one in power not only to to women being in power, but women and men in partnership being in power. So that's a power shift. And uh, so much of shamanism is about power. It's so much about cultivating your energy and your intention and what you do with your energy, which is really your consciousness. Uh, so I had a deep seeding from her to, uh, to go to really what is one of the big ills of the world, and that is how we use power or how we abuse power in a way, uh, and how we could change that with becoming more conscious. That's why, for me, cultivating conscious leadership and helping leaders to become more conscious leaders is part of, in a way, supporting that paradigm shift. And because the more conscious you become as a leader, you start... Uh, dealing with power in a totally different way. But power is something we we can't avoid. All the from the time we are born, we are dealing with power. When we uh, when we are toddlers, we are starting to learn to to uh, stand up and or crawl. We are bidding for power. So and that we do this all through our lives. We want to have a promotion at work or or become a get a PhD or whatever it is. We are bidding for power. So that's what we need to do because that's how we thrive. But how we do it is a different thing. So I it was just in my heart and uh, I did uh, I did some review of my purpose with a, a wonderful uh, friend and colleague of mine, Tim Kelly, a few years ago. He is the founder of the True Purpose Institute. And I did some personal work with him to be sure that this was exactly coming from my soul and not from my mind or from my mm -hmm. ego. And sure enough, it was. So I founded the True Power Institute to make that my my focus. Excellent. Excellent. Now, you know, you use the term power quite a bit in that answer. And I just wanted to get your definition of, because a lot of people define power in a lot of different ways. Mm. And how would you define power? Uh, the, the easiest way for me to define power is that it is energy. Hmm. And everything is energy. That's what everything is power. <laughs> 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 Meaning you are energy 
and you are power and I am energy and I am power. And this is part of the message to help people understand that they have so much more power than they think they have. But power is really uh, an, an ability. It's, it's a word coming from Latin, poter. And uh, that means the ability to do something or make something happen. It's like a drive or a force that uh, we humans use to make things happen, to influence others, to impact others, to empower others. That's, that's the word power. And then if I add the true part to it, it gets a different definition for me. Then it becomes our connection to source energy. Hmm. That's one definition. Of, of that. And another definition I came up with is that it is our empower, it is our embodiment of source, creating heaven and earth for all. I love that. I love that. Yeah. You know, I noticed that in doing my research that you also have a mastermind. And before I ask my next question, I think it's so important, you know, Napoleon Hill's book, the, um, they can grow rich, mm -hmm. which really originally derived from the 17 habits or the 17 lessons of the law of success. Uh, he says in that book, I think a lot of people miss this, that the most important law is the law of the mastermind. Because if you don't have that law, the other laws don't even matter. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people miss that. And yeah. so with that being said, um, what is the true power mastermind? Well, it is based on Napoleon Hill's <laughs> <laughs> philosophy and concepts, of course. Uh, it is a it's a seven month uh, program for uh, uh, of eight to ten uh, leaders that come together uh, to uh, not necessarily to grow their business. Most masterminds are about money, making more money, growing your business. But this is more about growing you as a person, you as a leader. It's it's really for people. Uh, that are going through transition or are consciously realizing that they want to go to the next level of, uh, of, of their life, whether that is personally or professionally or both. And they want to be in a company of other, we could say, conscious leaders to get support, uh, to move forward, uh, to, to be in a space that is safe, and with uh, a diverse group of people that could give you a different worldview, different uh, perspective to what you are uh, dealing with, whether that's, as I say, a personal issue or a work-related issue, or you, you want to um, take a new job, or you want to, uh, or you say you are made, <laughs> you, are, you are promoted, you all of a sudden are a CEO, so how, how uh, so a lot of responsibilities uh, coming from that. So how do you deal with that? And and uh, maybe you have a coach, which is great, but it's really wonderful also to have support of other like-minded people. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's also, it's also uh, I call it an expansion and dreaming incubator hmm. because it's it's kind of an invitation to people to start to expand their mindset and their worldview and also to revisit maybe old dreams that they might have had and, and put to the side when they were uh, getting their education, starting their career, maybe building a family. And then often it's not practical or financially possible to go after your dreams. So many people wake up at around the age of 40, 35, 40, 45, and feel that they are unfulfilled, that there is something within them that they have not been nurturing. And they feel that, you know, regardless of all the outside successes that they might have, say, in their career or making money, that there is still something left for them to do. And often that is, uh, that is in, in connection with a, a, a dream uh, or, or something it could be their purpose that, that wants to be coming to the forefront and giving attention. Hmm. I see the benefit and I see the value that I'm a proponent behind the importance of building, I call it tribes, I like to say connectionally intelligent tribes of individuals you are in alignment with and I understand what you shared with me about the, your mastermind, the power 
true power mastermind, like you said, is different than what I've heard other folks refer to as a mastermind mm-hmm. on how to just make money together, but how to transform their lives. Yeah. And I love that. Yeah. Um, one of the things that, again, leading to my next question, in my business, I'm really big on building relationships. I like to say connections, mm-hmm. more than networking. I think networking is a, a term that has a lot of negative connotations. So I like mm-hmm. to say, I want to connect with you, not network with you, because the connection is much uh, a much more deeper level. Yeah. And I believe there's connection threads with that. And I have a whole methodology and a process for how do you build connections. And so with that being said, what are some of the key characteristics that you look for in establishing a new connection? Yeah. Uh, that's actually a great question because that's exactly what I do when I look for people from a mastermind. It's an invitation only. So I'm looking for a particular characteristics in people uh, to, to make sure that they fit well into, into the group. And um, one of the first thing I, I look for is how good a listener is the person? Hmm. Are they listening to respond or are they listening deeply to understand? Hmm. So that's definitely one thing. I like to see curiosity. Uh, I like to hear them ask good questions, being curious about me and what I'm doing. Uh, I, I like them to be open, to be willing to share with me what they are about and what they are doing or what their dreams are. I look for calmness. I look for, um, I, I look for, and this is particularly important for me in, in terms of the mastermind, uh, is there a sense of wanting to be of service to others? Hmm. Uh, or is this just about me and mine? You know, sometimes you get on calls with new connections and, uh, you realize that it's a monologue about them and <laughs> and that's not that's the opposite of what I'm, what I'm looking for i'm looking for people who who are open hearted who who are really interested in learning and growing and uh and interested in contributing to really making the world a better place absolutely you know i love everything you say you're looking for cuz it's something that I, I find alignment with like you said, um, my I came up with eight core virtues, and I share those with you to show you what I mean. It's and it's really for myself to hold me the true north. Not that I live these every single day, but this is my true north, mm-hmm. and I look for some of these and others that I connect with. And that is number one, being principle centered; two, being value driven; three, being um, action oriented; four, being growth minded; five, being a servant leader; six, being accountability acceptor. Seven, um, having a grateful spirit. And for me, all those exhibit who I work to be. And I look for those kind of connections in others. Mm -hmm. So I share that with you because you share with me what you look for, folks who listen, you know, and seek first to understand. So I'm hearing Stephen R. Covey in in that as well. And I definitely am a huge proponent. Seven Habits of Highly Effective People is my my Bible that I refer to, meaning that I study it daily as opposed to I read it and I just put it down. Mm-hmm. So your mastermind is something I'm definitely interested in and exploring that. I look forward to exploring that more with you, you know, as we continue to build our relationship out going forward. Mm-hmm. Um, now, my next question would be, and you kind of answered it within that question, but I just want to see if you had one to add more to it. Wh- who would be a great connection for you? Uh, great connection for me would be, um, I would say, visionary, progressive leaders, CEOs, uh, uh, senior executives, uh, senior uh, entrepreneurs, business owners. Uh, and I could say maybe just conscious leaders. <laughs> <laughs> but but people, uh, you know, um, people who are interested in, we could say, aspi- aspiring to be conscious leaders, because if that is the case, then I know uh, a little bit of where they are coming from or where they want to go. Uh, but I would I'm looking for more senior leadership. Uh, 
people, um, both for the mastermind as well as for other programs that I, that I have. Okay, excellent. Of all the things you've accomplished in your life, what would you say has been the most rewarding? I think I have to choose motherhood. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, I, I was lucky to have two beautiful sons and um, they were unlucky to lose their father at an early age. So uh, I was a single mom most of the time and I feel very blessed and privileged to, to, uh, to have had these two uh, beings in my life. And, uh, and that they uh, came to become decent human beings and are now uh, building their families. And uh, I would say there is nothing that, um, that touches you more than, than being able to help uh, life like that come, come to the planet and, and flourish. Absolutely. You know, one of the things I've learned in my life, and I know some people may have an issue with this statement, but I think that it rings true from my experience that of all the things that we learn about God, the characteristics, the behaviors, that in a human form, the closest thing you ever going to experience to that is a mother, mm. you know, unconditional love. Yeah. Um, and that's why the bond between a mother and a child is just so strong. I mean, yeah, you can have love for your father and that's there as well, but just something about the comfort, the, the, the feeling of again love that you get from being with your mother the energy love it's just unparalleled in that in that respect so it's beautiful that you said that that's one of the most rewarding things in your life so thank you for that Definitely. um what are some of the most now here's another one of my questions that i think one of my favorite ones and i just want to kind of set the context for it because each morning i go through rituals and i realize other conscious leaders do as well one of my rituals that I go through is wake up and I go through my gratitude moment and list all the things I'm grateful for because that sets my, it programs my mind for the day to so no matter what happens to me, I'm already grateful for being alive, for being healthy, for seeing, hearing, and all those things. So with that being said, what are some of the rituals that you do on a morning basis to kind of keep you in a positive spirit and keep you focused and having a loving energy that you are exhibiting right now? Well, I, I have a routine. <laughs> um, I am an early riser and um, I start the day with uh, taking about 30 minutes to activate my energy, hmm. literally uh, through energy practices, uh, including uh, toe tapping and brain wave vibration. <laughs> <laughs> I know this doesn't mean anything to, to people, but these, th these are what these practices are called. But uh, and and uh, you could say belly pumping. It's literally activating the energy system, the flow of energy in my body, and and getting the chakras to start uh, spinning, hmm. and to to have enough energy to flush to get alignment with my chakras. So that's what I do before I do anything else. Then I drink a bunch of water, and then I get myself outside as as soon as there is enough light to be out i'm out the door and i go for my walk uh my morning walk and i do this not only to move my body but also to get out into nature i do live in los angeles so um, i don't have a park next to me but i have beautiful streets around me with with mature trees and flowers and bushes and palms and I go, uh, I go for my walks to spend time with the plants, to, to in a in a way in communion with nature. Hmm. So I'm making the best I can of where I am, but it works. And I talk to trees. I sit under trees, <laughs> giving my gratitude there. Um, I touch the leaves of trees. Um, it's I one of my teachers is John Milton, who takes people out into nature on a leadership retreats. And I worked with him for over 12 years and went on a retreat, solo retreat out into nature every year, sometimes twice a year. And he instilled in me the importance of connecting to nature. 
So it's something I cannot be without. And sometimes on these walks, if I have time, I, I find a place to sit and maybe do some breathing exercises and, and, and just go inside for a, for a few minutes. And then I walk back home and start my day. That's an excellent answer. <laughs> definitely want to learn more about the toe tapping and exciting the chakras, but I definitely resonate with a lot of other things you said for sure. Now, we'll get down to the last two questions. Um, um, these last two, I would say probably, again, among my favorite ones. And that is, is there a King Connection you would like to meet? And what I mean by King Connection, I mean someone who, because of their financial success and or social capital success, or just their lives in general. They're someone who you admire and having a connection to that individual can change your life exponentially, your business and your personal life if they add you to the inner circle, meaning that you have their cell phone number, you can call them at any time and be added to their network. Um, a person for me that fits the description would be Magic Johnson. He's someone that because of who he is, his smile lights up a room, his behavior, his characteristics has been there for the last 40 years. And he's someone that everybody still wants to be connected with. So as a mentor, advisor, coach, he can fill all those roles. So who would be a King Connection for you? I have absolutely no idea. I have no idea who, who you are connected to. And uh, and I, to be really honest, I, I just don't... Uh, and maybe this is a lack on my part of not doing it, but I, I'm, I'm not looking so much outside hmm. for for these things. Um, so, and and, I, and again, I don't know who whom you know, who is is your connection. If maybe if if I went over your list, someone would pop up, but. Well, not not just limited to who I may know. I'm just saying in general in the world that you will just will want to meet yeah. someone. I think I would have liked to meet Thich Nhat Hanh, who just passed. Mm. Mm. I think he was uh, an incredible person and uh, and someone I would have loved to meet. Mm. Excellent. And Gandhi, of course. <laughs> going, say, for, going for the guys that are gone. <laughs> <laughs> well, it just, to me, it helps frame how you see it in the picture, do we have any of that in common? You know, so that's a right. question for that. Then my last question would be, um, what book would you recommend or books that right. you feel that would resonate with our listening audience? You know, uh, you, you had warned me about uh, uh, thinking about a book. So I, I just asked myself, what book do I want to share? And there was a book that came into my mind, and it's an old book. It's a 24-year-old book, but I pulled it out of my my um, bookshelf. It's a book that was, uh, a, a, how could I say, very influential for me. This was long before uh, con conscious capitalism was, uh, or, or or my notion of conscious leadership was, was out there linking that to conscious capitalism. Uh, it's a book from 1998 by an Indian professor who is deeply steeped into spirituality. And he wrote a book called Leading Consciously, A Pilgrimage Towards Self-Mastery. Mm. And the way he talks about leadership and corporations and management and consciousness uh, is so deep and it spoke so profoundly to me that in a way that had a, a major uh, in, impact on me to, to, to and, and why when I started to learn about the concept of conscious leadership, for instance, within the conscious capitalism model of, of the four pillars of purpose, stakeholders, orientation, culture, and conscious leadership, yes. I, I felt I was home. Mm. So the book looks like this. By, uh, I can't say his name, De Depasis Chatterjee. And he is he's still alive. He's still working. I've actually met him once at Esalen at a conscious business conference. Uh, uh, well, he is someone I would like to meet. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Thank you. And thank you for that book recommendation. I, you know, I had already put it in my queue on Amazon. 
one of the reasons why I ask that question is I always want to learn what other conscious leaders are reading and what they're yeah. doing. And, and that's what has been the purpose of the podcast. So uh, what I want to do is give you the opportunity to share any closing thoughts you want to have with our listening audience and plus your contact information as well, how I can get in touch with you. Right. Uh, I, I, would, I would just like to invite people to, I would like to invite people to expand their vision of who they are and what they can do. Uh, and understand that every single one of us is important if we are here on the planet at the moment. Every single one of us has a unique uh, uh, gifts and talents, and every single one of us has a role to play in the evolution of humanity. So I encourage people to take it seriously and commit to, mit, uh, commit to really fulfilling your own potential while you are serving the greater whole, so we can all together kind of create uh, a sustainable and not only sustainable, but regenerate the future for the next generations and beyond that. Excellent. And people can reach me on my website through my website, which is www.truepowerinstitute.com. I'm also on Twitter, very active on Twitter. Uh, you find me on Instagram and uh, on Facebook as well. And LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a, maybe a best place to, to get me as well, apart from the website. Well, thank you, Rona, for being a guest uh, on my show, sharing and departing your wisdom. I'm sure you're going to definitely impact thousands of lives who watch it just as much as you have impacted mine by being able to interview you. So thank you again for your investment of time and energy. And as I would like to say, I bless every, wish everyone a remaining blessed part of their day. Thank you so much for having me. And Kenneth says, thank you for being a guiding light, Runa. <laughs> thank you, Kent. You are too. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, everybody.